Hello YouTube, this is Rob the Real, I'm Dave's uh, cameraman, and we are going to do a different series here from the campground. Kind of just give you a little bit of a feel for what we got going. Oh, and who are these three critters over here? Hey YouTube, Doppler Dave here. I got my daughter Alyssa Hi. and my other daughter Nikki. And we are here to do a part 11 video of our update on our cargo trailer to camper build. And we're coming to you from Savannah State Park here in Port St. Lucie. And it is a beautiful weekend. We're here for Thanksgiving. And we're going to give you an update because we haven't done one in a while. So kudos to Florida State Parks. It is a beautiful park, um, well maintained. Um, and it's in Port St. Lucie. I want to give a kudos again to Cargo Camper Rob. Uh, he's got a YouTube video uh, page also. Uh, he's doing a build and watch it and it's a great build. Um, another thing I also found was we, if you're doing a cargo trailer build, cargo trailer conversion. It's a Facebook forum. You have to ask to be accepted, which evidently most people do and we're going to do a bunch of different stuff today the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of give you a, a view of our campsite like I said we're actually camping this weekend we've done a lot of stuff to it over the last couple of weeks and we're gonna cover why in a little bit Robbie's doing our camera right now we're gonna try to do a trade-off where Les is going to film it so Robbie and I who have done most of the work and kind of cover a lot of the, the changes for you. So Robbie's going to follow us around. We're going to head over to our campsite. Robbie's going to kind of show you, you know, our surroundings, where we're at, and the campsite. And then we'll get started. Basically, the Savannahs is a, a nature preserve. We've got a lot of natural canals. This is where we're at actually camping is what they affectionately call Gator Island. Uh, we did actually have a gator outside yesterday in the water and maybe about like two, two and a half feet, but that is Florida. You know, you have water and you're in this kind of setting, you're going to have, you know, alligators. You know, just do not feed them. I want to just say that on the, the alligator subject. So. so I'm going to move around here and I'm going to hand this off to Alyssa who is going to continue with the video. Thank you, Minnie Me. Okay. All right, and I'm going to start off with this. I This is the first time I've done this is I'm going to, I actually do have a cheat sheet, unfortunately, because we have not done a video in so long. I actually had to go back and look at our previous videos. So the first thing we're going to start off with is why we haven't had a video in four months. Um, Robbie and I have been between, we changed jobs. Um, I've been in my new job for five months now. Mm, I, will use, I went from management and I'm trying to scale back. I was looking for a less stressed job, which I did. So finances have been a bigger issue and bills have to come first so that's why we've had a little bit of a lapse in videos that pretty well covers it you got to pay the bills first yep we got to pay the bills first so we've gotten everything taken care of on our end financially and we're back we're back <laughs> our bills are second priority to our bills so we're gonna go inside we're gonna basically what we're gonna do is we're going to cover stuff inside and then cover stuff outside yeah so probably it, gonna do it in two parts just to keep it easy so we're gonna do some of the plumbing stuff inside and stay tuned for the part two and then we'll show you how the plumbing stuff worked outside it just makes it easier for our filming exactly Sorry, so all right so all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you storage first 
um, like I said, we're actually using the camper today, this weekend, and actually show you what we did for storage, just for ideas. And then we'll cover more of the technology, what build part we did. All right, so, you know, we've got storage underneath the sink. Um, one of the things I found that worked out good is, you know, the little non-slip rubber mats that you get at the dollar store, little plastic, you know, drawer system, and that kind of thing is what we did underneath the sink. And up above, I built it knowing what I was going to use for storage bins, but all we did was just the plastic bins from the dollar store. Actually, that was the Home Depot. The Home Depot or the dollar store. Either way, you can get them. And what I did to make it easier, because, you know, they all look the same, and to make it easy, I labeled them. I don't know if you can, you know, like this one right here has got coffee, creamer, sugar. This way, you kind of have an idea. Making it organized is, it makes it a whole lot easier for you than just, well, what's in this box? What's in this bin? Label them so you know. And what I'm going to do, let's say is I'm going to move over here. It's a small space. It's a cargo trailer. And I'm going to show you what we did in the bathroom. Um, you saw the shelf system. Once again, well, the dollar store, um, I found that these little tote boxes, you know, they, they fold up. They had a little bottom in them. Four of them fit nicely across. I got a couple of bigger ones, you know, for a little bit bigger, bulkier items, whatever. And, you know, there's room for, you know, towels, you know, all that kind of, you know, different stuff you need. And so that's our storage on, in the bathroom area. Um, hot water heater. What we ended up doing was, um, once again, I've told you before, eBay. I'm going to show you this is um it's a two and a half gallon what they call a point of use tanked hot water heater and it's it runs off 110 it runs you know basically about 12 amps um it's i believe they said a 1400 watt element and i you know before we actually came out this weekend i tested it last week and it took about maybe 20 minutes to get hot water um, it was, it's got an adjustable setting. I set it at 125 degrees, which is, you know, typically what you have at your house and it's been working great. It's enough to do dishes and we've, like I said, we've got the outside shower and it's enough that one person could take a shower, you know, let it sit for 20 minutes and you got more hot water. And once again, we went everything electric because the electric is free, unlimited. I'm not paying for it here rather than doing propane. Somebody commented the other day on one of my videos is off-grid. I don't plan on boondocking, living off-grid, no solar. I plan on coming to state parks, campgrounds where I have water, electric, sewer. Depends what you want to do. But that is what we did with that. Um, bedding. Um, like I said, we're using it, so we're going to do an update video next week more about the, the bedding. But basically, the girl's bed is a flip-up bunk. Like I said, we're actually using it this weekend, but in theory, basically, it flips up. And if you want to show Melissa, what I did was this will actually flip up straight up and down. And there's a spot on either side. There's one of these barrel bolts on either side, and that's the girl's bunk bed. And we have 24 inches height, Robbie. And the yeah. girls, they're 9 and 11. It worked for them. They loved it last night. So mathematically, that was a good height. Um, and we did go with 3-inch foam for the cushions. And it worked out really well. And kudos to uh, Robbie, because Robbie works for an RV dealer. Uh, I'm not going to disclose who. But he had managed... <laughs> He managed, um, this actually was the ladder rack uh, from the exterior of a Class A RV that I guess went to the body shop, whatever. And I found out that 60 inches is pretty much the standard size for a bunk bed ladder. 
uh, Robbie got it for five dollars and if you would have bought just this ladder on from what I found on eBay was about a $75 ladder so um, good score kudos to Robbie thank you very much for that um, the next thing I'm going to show you is the rear sofa area so I'll let you kind of show you what's going on that is how the sofa area looks. It is um, a futon mattress from Walmart. It was, it's six inches thick. Um, it's a twin, I believe, uh, mattress. And I'm going to show you kind of how the conversion goes. Because it's L-shaped, I do have a filler. If you want to come over here, listen. This was basically a sheet we got, no, I bought to cover what I was neighbor was getting rid of a sofa and I saved some of the foam it's six inches thick just like the rest of it and so all I have to do is take this off oh can I interject here yes the foam if you're going to take mattress material foam whatever if you need to cut it to fit just a little tip electric carving knife like to use for your turkey yes works beautiful don't don't try anything else just one nice swoop nice and straight electric carving knife worked out very well because i had to do that with this and actually the girls mattress the foam material i bought off of ebay was a little bit too big had to trim it and yes the electric knife worked very well so what i'm gonna do is basically we this is your sofa area all i have to do when i'm gonna go camping Bam, it slides, and do a little bit of a tuck. Bingo, you have a sleeping surface. And basically the bedding I did, the frame, the, the platform is half inch plywood. So what we ended up doing was to cover the space, I built a cleat and there is a flip down leg. And you can sit down on it. There is plenty of support. Uh, Robbie and I both sat on here. No problems at all. So we found that this worked. And what's really nice is we still have use of our flip-up table. My thought is, you know, I'm going to sleep with my head up here. But my power port's over here. I can put my phone over here, charge it, whatever. And I think that works out well. And if you want to, I've got we've got the slide out also over here. So that worked out really well. Uh, also, what we did was we mounted the refrigerator. And unless if you want to show them, there's well, all we did was used some real small L brackets to keep it in place, and it worked really well. I did not do most RVs; they have like a pin to keep the fridge closed, but. What I found when we trailered it here, I put the easy up in front of the door and it kept it closed because I haven't quite figured out if I, what I want to do to keep the fridge closed. So let's see. Lighting. Obviously, uh, we did all of our lighting. Like I said, we did every we were gonna do everything in LED. I got five of these light fixtures on eBay for I think $40 and they take like no power make no heat also it's not done yet we're going to show you that but um i got surround sound speakers in the back and also if you kind of back up a little it's like the wood that's in the back because that is where the taillight wiring and some of my other wiring is that's basically a piece of one by eight that i mitered on 45s to be able to run the wires in the very corners and it's basically the same thing it goes all the way up to the roof line which like i said we're actually using it isn't going to work um the other thing also i want to do is an email update i know i posted an email on a video a while back i've got a new email account had a problem with it. i believe it was hacked but my new email is d as in david l e h M A N N 1976 at yahoo.com. You can email me and Robbie. We'll 
respond to um, whatever questions you have, or you can also hit me up on our YouTube channel on whichever part you watch. Um, the next thing what we ended up doing was, I really can't show you because unfortunately we haven't done a video in a while, but I did show you the 12 volt system and the battery. The one thing I did not think about until I was moving on a little bit more is I do not have a sealed cell battery, which is an AGM battery. An AGM battery is a sealed cell. I have a venting battery. Batteries vent and they need airflow. So we're going to show you this more on the outside, but it has to be vented and we'll touch more on how we did it, And but it needs to be vented. I'll show you that later. Um, the other thing is we got the propane all done. Vent fan. Um, once again, love eBay. Um, what, one of the few things I did put on a switch is the exhaust fan. All right. A lot of people do the fantastic fan. This is not a fantastic fan. I believe the manufacturer was Hangs, H-E-N-G-U-S. And it is an insert. Basically, all you have to do is, this is my existing trim ring up here. I took that down, got rid of the screen and the crank handle. You have to have 12 volt up there. You wire up the fan, you set this up in there. It comes with a new crank handle and the screen. And it does have an on and off switch. What I did, like I said, showed you is I actually have it on a switch rather than having to push the push button. And this one was $40 versus Robbie. What is an actual fantastic over, over $200. And this one is single speed, which just for me, it worked. I don't need something that opens automatically because in my other videos, I do have the, the vent covers. I can leave the actual vent itself open. You actually, you use your existing vent. It fits any brand for $40, you get a fan. I believe it's 180 CFM, moves a lot of air. It's worked well. We tried it out and we like it. While we got the bathroom open, I'm going to let Alicia show you. Um, it's kind of, it is what it is, but for information purposes, that is our porta potty. And one of the things that I did was because with my build, it was a little bit low, which most porta potties are. I actually raised the floor up about six inches, used the same flooring um, sheet vinyl, but now it's more the height of a normal toilet, and it's a little bit more like being at home. And I also like it because that whole area now is also storage. So that has worked really well for us. Uh, did the over the door rack organizer. Yep. And if you wanna back up Alyssa, um, go towards the back. I'll give them an update on what we're gonna do next. You've seen the electric fireplace and I believe I've told you before, this is going to be our entertainment center. We're going to have a 30 inch flat screen TV. We're going to have, you know, the AM FM stereo. Um, the, the, the TV is going to be 110. The stereo is going to be just a regular 12 volt. You know, it's a Marine stereo, which um, doesn't really make much difference. And then two speakers in here. Um, that is next weekend's project for me and Robbie. So that I believe Robbie covers Hi. the interior modifications. Um, actually, Alyssa, maybe take, just kneel down a little bit here, and we covered up the, or we just, we covered the fact that this is our flip-up table, also our pantry, and as you can see, you know, I spent, you know, the last week trying to get ready for this weekend stocking it, so Robbie and I have it pretty much set up, and we've got the tabletop. What we ended up doing was I laminated it with Formica. But that is our pantry. Like I said, this is works actually a whole lot better than what we have at the house because a lot of this were stuff that we had at the house and I had to dig through different layers of it. But one can deep, it works. And it only extends, I want to say, five inches from the wall. And if I covered this before, I apologize, but... All you do is lift it up and you have all this floor space that makes it very accessible. 
So that is going to end the interior part. Uh, I'm going to call this part 11A of the interior. We're going to cover a lot of the exterior parts of what's involved here on the next part. So anyway, like, subscribe. God bless. God bless. All right, we'll see you on the next part.